Assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to DPS digital class I hope you are doing good let me introduce myself I am Ms. Sanab Daniel SS English at DPS Sahiwal so students today we will read the poem by Amy Lowell from the book of Oxford Modern English at page number 34 but before we start the poem here are some objectives of the lesson which I think I should share with you so by the end of this lesson you will be able to read the poem with correct pronunciation and intonation explain the poem in your own words comprehend the poem by the given question answers and tell the message of the poem I hope we'll together fulfill these objectives so students as you know that before we begin to read any literary work we first study about the author or poet in case of the poem since our today's topic is the poem by Amy Lowell so firstly we will study about Amy Lowell Amy Lowell was an American poetess born in 1874 in the state of Massachusetts America her literary work includes poems, essays, and biographies, which shows that she chose both genres, poetry, and prose to work on. We also see that she had a keen interest in writing biographies. Here, let me tell you the meaning of biography. Bio means life, and graph means shape. So, by biography, we mean a book on the life of a person. One such famous biography by Amy was about John Keats. Characteristics of her poetry include the use of imagery. You can see it on page number 35 in introduction to the poetess. Now you must be thinking that what is imagery? The word imagery comes from image. In simple words, it can be described as a language used by poets and writers to create images in the mind of the reader. In other words, we can say that a writer while using imagery gives us a very clear description of images and objects around him so that we can also see whatever he sees. For further clarification, let me read a sentence for you. The black night was filled with sparkling stars all over the sky. Listen again. The black night was filled with sparkling stars all over the sky. Now by this sentence, you can well imagine how the sky could have looked in a dark night with tiny sparkling stars on it. There must be an image of sky in your mind. So this is all what imagery is about. The reader can also see what the writer sees. So this was a brief introduction about the poetess. Now before we move on to the text of our poem, I want you to watch this short video clip so that you may be able to guess what we are going to study about. So let's start. You think that you'll die without him. You know that's a lie that you tell yourself. You fear that you lay alone forever now. It ain't true, ain't true, ain't true, no. So put your arms around me tonight. Let the music lift you up like you've never been so high. Open up your heart to me. Let the music lift you up like you've never been this free. Ain't 
tell you so You fear That you lay your love forever now It ain't true Ain't true Ain't true No I said it ain't no Ain't no crying Ain't no crying in the club No crying I said ain't no Ain't no crying Ain't no crying in the club Ain't no crying in the club So students, now that you have watched this video, I feel many of you would have guessed that our poem is about the growth of a plant and importance of water for it. So finally, we are ready to read the text. The poem. It is only a little twig with a green bud at the end. But if you plant it and water it, and set it where the sunlight will be above it. It will grow into a tall bush with many flowers and leaves which thrust hither and thither sparkling. From its roots will come freshness and beneath it the grass blades will bend and recover themselves and clash one upon another in the blowing wind. As you have read the first stanza, you must have noticed that there are not much rhyming words in the poem like regular poems. From this, we can imply that it is a free verse poem, means having verses which end freely without having any typical rhythmic pattern. Let's see the meanings of difficult words. So the first meaning we have is a twig. It is only a little twig. Twig means a small branch as you can see in the picture as well but it is a small part of a plant that develops into a leaf or flower you can see this picture as well bush a bush is a large plant but it is smaller than a tree you can say that it is a tree but it is actually smaller than a tree it's a large plant but smaller than a tree then we have thrust. Thrust means to push with force. As you can see in this picture that a man is pushing something with force. So thrust means to push with force. Hither and thither means here and there. Sparkling means shining. Okay, let's come to the text again for its explanation. It is only a little twig with a green bud at the end. Here Amy wants us to see that how tiny this little branch of tree is as compared to the bush from which it is taken. She further says, but if you plant it and water it and set it where the sun will be above it, it will grow into a tall bush with many flowers and leaves which thrust hither and thither sparkling. Now students, the point of understanding is that Though it is a very tiny looking thing, it can grow into a strong and tall bush. Though at this point, it is just a bow, but if you plant it in good soil, you water it and place it in sunlight, it will grow into a deep-rooted, strong bush. This bush will be having many sweet-smelling colorful flowers and green healthy leaves, which will be fluttering here and there because of the wind. From its roots will come freshness. Students, you know very well that what is the function of roots. You might have studied in science that root is that part of a plant which is under the soil and its function is to absorb water from it. Now from its roots will come freshness. Here the poetess means that from its roots will come water, which in turn will provide freshness to the plant. As you all know, that water is a source of freshness which in turn will provide stability to the plant and force to stand upright and beneath it the grass blades will bend and recover themselves and clash one upon another 
in the blowing wind. We can here clearly interpret that because of the shade of dense bush, grass is able to grow under it. If there is no shade of bush, then the grass cannot grow. Why? Because of the sharp and burning heat of sun, it would get burnt. Now read again. And beneath it, the grass blades will bend and recover themselves and clash one upon another in the blowing wind. Now students, we can well imagine that when wind, is, wind blows hard, everything blows away with it. We can see leaves and branches of trees. They clash with each other. They move into each other. They run into each other. The same happens with this grass which is present under the bush, its leaves will bend and straighten again and again or we can say that they will run into each other, they will clash with each other. Our first stanza is complete now. Let me give a quick recap of it. So, the poetess here says that though it is only a little twig, a little branch of a tree, which feels useless, but if this tiny and useless appearing thing is cared and nourished, it will grow into a tall bush with many such little twigs. Also, it will produce sweet smelling flowers and shade to others. Since our first stanza is complete now, I have some questions for you so that you can better comprehend the poem. Students, you can take a pen and paper, write down your answers so that later on you can discuss them with your teachers in your WhatsApp groups. So our first question is, but if you plant it and water it and set it where the sun will be above it, but if you plant it and water it and set it where the sun will be above it, what does it refer to here? Option A, bush, B. Twig C. Grass Bush, twig or grass I hope you have written down the answer. Move on to the next question. What does a green bud represent in the poem? Beginning of a new life? Decay of twig? Or none of these? Beginning of a new life, decay of twig, none of these. Our third question is, what is required for the nourishment of twig? What is required for the nourishment of twig? Water and sunlight, close it and blunted tools, or both above? Water and sunlight, close it and blunt tools, or both above. Fourth question is, why will the grass blades bend and clash into each other? Option A, due to the pressure of bush. Option B, due to the blowing wind. Option C, both above. Due to the pressure of bush, due to the blowing wind, or both above. We've come again to the text of the poem. Now in the second stanza. But if you take my twig and throw it into a closet with mouse traps and blunted tools, it will shrivel and waste. And someday, when you open the door, you will think it an old twisted nail and sweep it into the dustbin with other rubbish. Let's see some difficult words and meanings. From the stanza. The first word is closet. Closet is a cupboard, a wooden cupboard or cabinet or drawer, you can say, as you can see in the picture as well. Mouse trap means a trap for catching mice. Here are pictures attached so you can clearly understand what the meaning of that typical word is. By blunted, we mean that such a tool which does not have any sharp edges. For example, hammer. Hammer, unlike knife, it has no sharp edges. It is a tool, just like uh, blunted tools. It is a tool, but it has no sharp edges. Blunted means without sharp edges. Shrivel means to dry up, just like this leaf is dried up. Twisted nail means 
curved or deformed nail as you can see in the picture that a nail is twisted it is bent it is curved and deformed usually nails we use are straight they are straight in shape but this is a deformed one it is a twisted nail it is curved in shape so you can see its shape sweep means to wipe or to clean something students the second stanza begins with a sentence but if you take my twig you must be noticing this pronoun my who is my here obviously it is the bush who is addressing its readers that if you take my twig and throw it into a closet with mouse traps and blunted tools it will shrivel and waste as you have seen in the word meanings that closet is a wooden cabinet or drawer which is used to store things all of us have such closets in our homes have you ever seen the sunlight in your closets or water there no obviously no closet is a dark cabinet where water and sunlight cannot reach it is used just to keep tools like mouse traps and some day when you open the door now you have noticed students that we do not open the closets very frequently because there are such tools in it which are not in our regular use we do not need to use mouse traps daily or other tools daily so after some days when you open the door you will think at an old twisted nail and sweep it into the dustbin with other rubbish naturally when the twig will dry up shrink and waste because it is too dark in the closet for a twig to grow there when you will open the door you will think it is just an old twisted deformed nail and naturally you will throw an old and deformed nail into rubbish isn't it okay now it's time to recap the second stanza in the second stanza amy wants to give us a very simple and clear message that twig will dry up and waste if we do not give care and attention to it the thing which is supposed to give shade to others will itself dry up if left in closet since the poem is complete let's move on towards the questions so our first question is what is the twig compared to in the second stanza option a grass blade option b mouse trap option c old twisted nail grass blade mouse trap or old twisted nail next question why will the twig die in closet because of the mouse traps a option b option because of termites c option because of no water and sunlight there next question what did shrivel mean in the poem firm tighten or shrink firm tighten or shrink okay students it's time to derive a central idea of the poem here students let me tell you that by central idea we mean the main idea or thought around which the poem revolves or we can say that it is the point which the author wants you to remember the most so the central idea of our poem is that a shoot or a tiny twig of a plant can give rise to a new life only if it is provided with proper care and nourishment but it will die if no one gives it attention okay students so beyond the central idea did you notice that poetus wants to give us a message which is beyond twig and a tree so the message is that she wants us to know that nothing is unimportant we should take proper care of everything even if it is small and looks useless that's all for today's lesson thank you and have a good day